Since I have already downloaded and installed all the tools that I mentioned on the last part, on this part, I'm going to create an empty ASP.NET project. And then we're going to have a look at the default files and also publish this project or push this project to a GitHub repository. For that, let me start Visual Studio. And then in here from the options that I get here on the right, I'm just going to select the create a new project. Then here on the top right, search for ASP.NET MVC, which is the ASP.NET framework that we are going to use to build this app. And then from the options that you get in here, select the ASP.NET Core Web App Model View Controller. Click Next. Here now we need to define a project name. And since this is going to be a social media application, you can just name this, let's say, social app, social media app, or you can give it a more specific name, like for example, the circle app, let's say the circle of friends, so circle app. And then down here, you can see that we also have the solution name. Now the difference between a solution and a project is because inside a solution, you can have multiple projects. So for example, you can have this circle app just for the UI, but all the database interactions can be inside another project. So that way you have both of these projects inside the same solution. Another thing that you can change in here is that you can change the project location. So you can click in here, then you can just go to C drive. So this PC, then C drive. I'll just go to this folder and I'll just create a new folder. I'm going to name this, let's say app, select folder. And you can see that the location is updated. Now let us click next. On this view, now you need to add additional info, like for example, the framework that you want to use. And on this drop down, you're going to see all the .NET frameworks that you have installed in your machine. I'm going to select the latest one in here. The authentication type is going to be none because we want to manually add the authentication. The configure for HTTPS is going to be checked. So our app runs on HTTPS and we are going to leave the rest of the options unchecked and click create. So this is a default empty ASP.NET MVC app. And here on the right, where you have the solution explorer, which if you don't see in here, you can just go to view and then solution explorer. We have some default files. Now here we have at the top, we have the solution, which is basically the overall container for the projects of your app. We have the circle app, which is the main project within the solution, which contains all the application files. And we have the connected services, which is a folder for managing service dependencies like cloud services or external APIs. And if you want to add, for example, a connected service, you can just right click, then add. And you can add, for example, Azure Storage, Azure Key Vault, and all these other services that you get by default. Then next, we have the dependencies. And the dependencies contains the NuGet packages and also the project dependencies. Right now in here, we have just like the frameworks. We don't have any NuGet options or project dependencies, but we are going to have these options once we move to the next part where we install NuGet packages or add a reference to another project. And then we have the properties. Properties just holds project properties, settings and configurations. And for that inside here, you have the launch settings.json file. If we open this file, you are going to see that in here we have some default configurations, like some profiles, for example, HTTP, HTTPS, and also IS Express, which are three different profiles where you define how you want to run your app. And once you add a new section in here, you get that option here at the top where you can select basically how you want to run your app. Then we have the root folder. The root folder or the web root folder is used to serve static files like HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. And here by default, you can see that we have a CSS folder, a JS, and lib, which is for libraries like, for example, Bootstrap, jQuery, and also jQuery validation. The controllers folder is a folder for the MVC controllers, which basically handle the user input and also the interactions. And by default, we have the home controller. We also have the models. The models has the data models, which represent the structure of your data. 
And throughout this course, we are going to create multiple models. We are going to also define the relationships between models. Then we have the views. This is a folder for the MVC views, which are just the UI templates for your app. By default in here, we have the home folder, which as you can see, matches the home controller name. So basically whatever action we have within this controller or this file, we have a razor view file inside this folder. The shared one is just like the general one, which has the layout, which is basically like a main view for the app. All the views like the index or privacy get rendered in the layout.c-sharp HTML. We have the validation script partial.c-sharp HTML, which is a partial view containing validation scripts. And the error.c-sharp HTML is the view template for displaying the error messages. The view imports is a view for importing namespaces and view specific configurations. We have the view start, which sets up the common view settings like the layout for all the views. And then here you can see that we have set the underscore layout. The app settings.json file is also known as the configuration file for the application settings, such as database connection strings and app specific configurations. The last file is the program.cs, which is the main entry point of the app, which also contains the startup logic. In here, you can see, for example, that we set up or we add services to the container. We configure, for example, the HTTP request pipeline and all these other configurations that we're going to talk about in the upcoming parts. Now, if I run the app, I'll just run the app. This is what we are going to get in here. You have the app title, you have the home and also privacy, which are basically being rendered from the home controller, the index action and the privacy action. So this is the app. I'm just going to close the browser and go back to Visual Studio because now we want to push our code to a GitHub repository. To push this app to a GitHub repository, you need to go in here to add to source control then git and then in here depending which service you want to use so like if you want to use for example github you need to log in with your github account if you want to use azure devops you can just go in here and then you need to log in but you can also use other existing services like for example bitbucket etc i'm going to use github so i'll just go in here i need to re-enter the credentials this might be a screen just for me because I have enabled the two-factor authentication. If not, you're going to be logged in. Let me just provide the authentication code in here. Once you are logged in, you're going to get the success message in here, which means that now you can close the browser and go to Visual Studio. Then here you can see that I have the account which I just logged in. I am the owner and I need to define a repository name. Then you can optionally define a description and I can just type in here, for example, this is the source code of the social media application named circle app or maybe just circle. And then this is going to be a public repository. So I'm going to uncheck this one and then create and push. Now you can see down here that the master branch was created by default and all the code is being published to the repository. If everything goes as expected here on the left, you're going to get this notification saying that created and pushed repository to GitHub was successful. Let me just close this one. And to verify if everything worked as expected, you can just go in here to github.com, then type your username, which in my case is itrupia, and then the repository name, which in my case is the circle app. I'll press enter. And you can see that I have the repository and this repository has just a single branch, which is the branch master. Now, if you want to create another branch, you can create it using Visual Studio or the GitHub desktop app. Let us first create it using Visual Studio. So for that in here, just go to the branches. We are in here on the part three. So what I'll type in here is zero three. And then since we don't have any branches, you can click the new branch option. 
you can see that this branch is going to be created based on master. So it's going to be a copy of the master branch. And then when you check the checkout branch means that the branch is going to be created and it's going to be set as the active branch for this project. I'm going to click the create button and this is going to create the branch. Now the branch now is just local. So to push this to GitHub, you just go in here and then click the push option. So you can see here on the left that the pushing 03 has started. Now let us go back to the GitHub repository and then here let us just refresh the browser. Now you can see that we have two branches. So if you just click in here, you're going to see that we have the master and the 03 branch. Now let us open GitHub desktop. And in here from the options that we get, go to add an existing repository from your hard drive. Click in here, go to the path, which is in C drive. Just go in here. My case is in this folder. I'm going to select the app folder, then circle app and select folder and then add repository. And you can see now that if I fetch the origin, which means I'm going to get all the branches from the remote repository, which is in github.com. We're going to see in here that we have the master branch and 03. To create a new branch, you can just click branch, then new branch, and then select in here from which branch you want to base it, meaning from which branch do you want to create a copy from. Let us set in here 03. I'll name it 03 and maybe just underscore another. And then create branch and then click the publish branch option in here. So Git is really important when it comes to managing code. And so far we have used two Git tools, the Visual Studio itself and also this GitHub desktop. But if you want to learn how to use Git using command, you can check this article. It's named Git without the complexity. And I've created a PDF file, which is just eight pages long, which you can download. It's going to show you how you can install Git, how you can create repositories, something about the Git architecture and much more. You can find it on .net how .net, then slash Git without the complexity, all the words with a dash in between.